Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Here is Emad and this is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 44. In this episode, I'm going to share with you a lot of new changes across 11 different Google Apps. But before starting, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel to get notified about my upcoming videos. And now, let's jump in. Let's start with Google Photos and the first change is the new screenshots banner. As you see here in the home page of Google Photos, this banner will take you right away to the screenshots folder. And the counter resets every 24 hours. So if you didn't take any screenshots for 24 hours, it will reset itself and the whole banner disappears until you take a new one. So here's a quick demonstration on how it works. Once I take a screenshot, now the counter says three. And if I deleted this screenshot, it will go back again to two screenshots as before. The second change is the ability to apply a blur effect in more subjects that include animals and other objects too. So as an example, here's a photo of my dog. And when I tap on the edit button and then go to tools, now I have the blur effect activated without having a human being in the shot. And as you see, I can adjust the blur effect just fine. I also tried this feature with other objects like mobile phones and the statues and it worked as expected, but keep in mind it's only available for Google One subscribers. Change number three is under backup and sync settings and then cell data usage. If you have the backup over cellular feature activated, now you will see a new toggle to choose if you want to also backup your videos over data or just your photos. Previously, this toggle didn't exist as shown now on the screen. Change number four and the last one in this chapter is under search. Now when you search for anything other than people, let's say animals, and then expand the filters menu, there is a new option here called avoid people. Tapping on it will only show you photos of animals without any people in the scene. I tried this feature with other objects like landscapes and cars and it worked just fine. Next, nearby share. And now you have the ability to send data to multiple devices at the same time. And as an example, here's my Pixel 6 Pro ready to send this video to the Pixel 4a and the Pixel 5. So all I'm going to do here is to tap on share and then choose nearby share and wait for a few seconds. Here's the Pixel 5 gave me a notification and also the Pixel 4a. All I need to do is to tap on both of them and I'm getting the notification here on the Pixel 4a. I'm waiting for the Pixel 5. And as you see, the transfer is taking place at the same time for both devices. This feature will save you a lot of time when you try to share stuff with people, but I'm not sure about the maximum number of devices it supports. So if you have any idea, please let me know in the comments below. Next, digital well-being. And now we got a new widget that will show you some information about your screen on time on your home screen. And this is how it looks. It will first show you the amount of time and then the top three apps you have used. On the left, there are three circles. Each one has its own color and also the size of the circle represents the amount of usage. This is the smallest size you can get which will only show you the time and this is the maximum width. Once you make it taller, you will start to see the circles and now we have a legend on the left to tell you which app is related to which color and also this is the maximum size you can get. And finally, tapping anywhere on the widget will take you to your digital well-being dashboard. Next, Gboard. And the only change I'm going to show you today is the redesigned floating keyboard. Once you activate the feature, as you see, the floating keyboard looks different. First, it has a small handle at the bottom instead of the circular D-pad icon. You can use it to reposition the keyboard. And once you release your finger, the uh, resizing handles will appear briefly. Then you can use them to resize your keyboard like this. And once you release your finger and wait for a few seconds, the handles will disappear. And in this case, you will not be able to resize the keyboard. You have to first move it, wait, and then use the handles. You will also notice more rounded corners that match the design language of Android 12. And we no longer have the option to dock it back again in place by moving it towards the edge like before. But instead, you need to tap the ellipsis button and turn off the feature. Next, Google Chrome on desktop. And now we got a new feature called Journeys that you can access by clicking the ellipsis button at the top right corner and then click on History. Here you will find two tabs at the top. The first one is called List, which is the original one we have, and the new one called Journeys. This feature will automatically group your search queries and visited websites by topic. So for example, here I searched for nearby share on Windows and I visited three different websites that are now grouped together. And also I have related search queries that I can use to continue my research to find the answer I'm looking for. 
On top of this, you can click the ellipses button at the top right corner of each card to open all pages into a new group. The second option is called remove from history, which will allow you to remove all of them from your journeys. And finally, remove from all history, which will remove them from your journeys and also your history list. This feature will save you from bookmarking the web pages and you can continue your research about a specific topic with the click of a button. Next, YouTube. And the first change is the more rounded context menus. As you see here, when I tap on the ellipses, now I'm getting a floating card with more rounded corners and instead of being attached towards the bottom of the screen, and you will also see the same thing in landscape view. When I tap on the settings button, now we have a much smaller card with more rounded corners. You can dismiss this card by dragging it towards the bottom like this using the small handle at the bottom. But the only thing I don't like here, when I tap on quality, as you see, the options are now appearing in full screen like before and the same thing applying to the playback speed options. So I hope Google will make these two options smaller to match the size of the floating card. Change number two is in the profile page. Now when you tap on your profile photo at the top, you will see three new shortcuts at the bottom. One takes you to YouTube Studio, the other for YouTube Music, and finally YouTube Kids. And if you don't have any of the apps installed, it will give you this card to quickly install the app. Or it will take you right away to the relevant app like this. Change number three and the last one is the ability to share other channels posts on your own channel. Now I have a post from made by Google and as you see I have a share button. Tapping on it will allow me to share the post and also I can use the add sign to mention other channels as well like this. So you can choose it from the list and start typing your own words. This feature seems to be only available for content creators because when I sign in with any other account I don't see the share button. Next, YouTube music. And the only change I'm going to show you today is the ability to share songs via Snapchat. All you need to do is to tap on the ellipses and then tap on share. You will find Snapchat as the first option. Tapping on it will create the post for you and anyone can click on the link to start listening to the song. Next, Google Contacts. And finally, it got material you design. And as you see here at the bottom, we have now two tabs. One called contacts, which will show you your normal list of contacts. And the other one is called fix and manage. Plus we have now the hamburger menu on the left. So when you go to fix and manage, you will get this bigger cards, one for each option. The first one is merge and fix. And the second one is import from SIM, restore contacts, import from file, export to file, trash and settings. Under settings, you will see the rest of the options that are not showing in the previous page. And here you can also access your emergency contacts and the blocked phone numbers. And when you go to contacts and then expand your hamburger menu, all you get here is your account name and also the labels if you have any, or you can add a new one if you want. Next, Google app. And now we have the ability to delete the last 15 minutes of search history by tapping on the profile picture and then you will find delete last 15 minutes. Tapping on it will show you this toast notification saying deleting history changes will show in your account soon and then it will disappear. The second change is under snapshot. As you see here, once I tap on the button, I'm getting a banner says that snapshot is going away soon. You can still ask your assistant for the updates you find here, like calendar events, birthday reminders, stock prices, and more. Next, Google Recorder app. And the first change is the new tile that you can add to your quick settings that will allow you to start a new recording immediately from the quick settings area like this. You will also notice a smaller pause and resume button once you start recording. The media controls also look different when you start playing your recording. So as you see here, the play and pause button is now circular. Also the skip forward and backward buttons are now much bigger than before. You will also find other visual tweaks here and there like the centered audio and the transcribe tabs with bigger buttons and more. And what's new as well is the ability to set your recorder app to match your device theme under settings, then theme, then you choose system default. And the last app I'm gonna talk about today is Google Playbooks. As you see, it got a Material U widget, so let me add it to my home screen to show you how it works. The first thing to show you here is the book labeling. So for example, I downloaded an audiobook, and as you see, I have the headset icon. I downloaded a sample and a normal ebook. So by this, you can immediately identify the type of books you have. Go up to eight different books on the same page, and then you can use the arrows at the top to move to the next one. When you tap on the word your books, it will take you right away to your library. And finally, this is the smallest size you can get from this widget. 
So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to share with you. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. And in case you spotted any new feature in Google Apps, you can reach me out on social media or just drop me a comment so I can include this feature in my future videos. But for now, thank you for watching and see you the next video.